Here's a list of the major factors which prove that plastic has an important place in our daily lives. However, what do we do after using the plastic articles? After we realize that they are no longer of any use to us, we throw them away, right? But have you ever wondered what happens after that? What is the journey of the plastic once it enters the garbage bin? You may wonder why is it so important to know about plastic which is waste after it's thrown away. Just think for a moment. Plastic is a type of solid waste. That means it will occupy space when we throw it away. And can we afford the consumption of space by waste materials at this point of growing population? Absolutely not. That makes us find an alternative to just dumping off the plastic. Let us think about what can be done with the plastic after we throw it away. One option is that we can burn it. What will that result in? By burning plastics, we could effectively get rid of them. This will make sure that no space will be occupied, right? Wait, just think for a moment. Is it really advisable to burn plastic? We know the fact that plastic just melts on heating. It does not completely turn into ashes. What remains behind is simply an unusable form of molten plastic. And is there any other ill effect? Yes, burning plastics leads to release of various harmful fumes. The chemicals released can cause severe health issues in humans as well as other living organisms. So that means the option of burning of plastics is completely ruled out from our list. What other option can we think of? Maybe we can try burying the plastic in soil. Can this be a good option? Maybe yes, because that would not lead to the release of harmful fumes and neither will it occupy space. So can we bury all the waste plastic that gets generated? Wait a second. Will the microbes in the soil get affected if we dump plastic in their homes? Yes. The stress given to the naturally living organisms in the soil by plastics is quite significant. But why do they get stressed? Let me explain. We know that when organic matter gets into the soil, the microbes present will degrade it. This is called the decomposition reaction. But the reaction is possible only when we have organic matter. And as far as we know, plastics are nowhere close to being organic. Thus, their inorganic nature makes them unfit for decomposition. How do we address such substances scientifically? Well, those which can be degraded by the microorganisms are called biodegradable. Whereas materials like plastics which cannot be degraded are called non-biodegradable. Thus, it is the non-biodegradable nature of plastics that do not make them fit for burial. If we still bury them, then they will only occupy space in the soil and it will also lead to soil pollution. And what's worse is that they will harm the natural microbes in the soil. So the option of burying plastics also gets ruled out. So we cannot burn them or bury them. What option are we left with then? What can be done with the plastic waste generated? Well, the simplest, most convenient and environmentally friendly option is recycling. Yes, plastic has the property to melt when heated and the molten plastic can be further molded into different forms, right? Thus, the plastic waste can be recycled to form newer useful items. So, can we say we are sorted with the plastic waste? Actually not. Shouldn't the best option be to not generate plastic waste in the first place? Don't we have a substitute for the smaller plastic items that we use daily? For instance, the bags that we use for shopping in markets. The plastic ones can be replaced with jute or any such natural material. This will help in lesser generation of plastic waste. It is our responsibility to keep the environment clean and safe for other organisms as well. And is there a better solution to this? Yes, we can keep in mind the four R's. And what are the four R's by the way? It simply stands for reduce, Reuse, Recycle and Recover. Isn't this principle self-explanatory? Of course, yes. It says that we should reduce the use of plastics in the first place. If we use it, then we should use it repeatedly. That is, it has to be reused. Once it turns useless, we should recycle it. 
That means we should convert it into a similar or a different product which is useful. And what does recover mean? There are many materials which are complex in nature. These cannot be directly recycled. So we opt for recovering the energy stored in them. In such cases, we process the materials in various stages to get the energy stored inside them. Following such rules can help us keep the environment healthy. We must not forget that our beautiful planet is shared by many other living organisms too. Keeping the environment clean for ourselves as well as for other organisms is one of our most important responsibilities.